individuals be jailed or killed before they can commit those crimes. When kill somebody because them that will kill somebody, unavoidable and it's sad. It's disgusting what it is. But I definitely will sacrifice myself. Hey V Squad, welcome back to another video. If you're new here, my name is Bikana. I create lifestyle, travel, and vacational real estate videos. So I'll be doing a question and answer, but a little bit more unique question and answer video. So we're gonna touch on about 20. There are some more questions, and if you want me to answer more questions like this, then let me know. If you have any opinion on any of these, please drop a comment down below. Let's have some decent, sensible conversations in the comment section. No arguing. If someone doesn't believe what you believe, then don't fight them on it. That's, everyone has their own belief, right? And everyone has their own opinions. So let's get on into it. And if you can hear the fan in the background, I live in a warm country, guys. I tried recording this without a fan and my neck was wet. It was embarrassing. I was embarrassed. Okay? So please bear the fan noise if you can hear it. The first question is, what or who would you sacrifice your life for? So personally, personally, I would sacrifice myself for anybody that I love. Especially if we're in some life or death, not life or death, like fight or flight situation. You know, like an example that always comes to mind is if there's something coming at you and you push your friend out the way, but then you end up falling the way. Like... You know that's that's me sometimes like I might freeze up but I definitely will sacrifice myself for the people that I love period period um the next question is what single event has had the biggest impact on who you are so for me that would be I have a lot of events that have impacted me and I can't really pick one but I can say that being from Jamaica, spending like a good chunk of my youth in Jamaica and then moving to America and spending a good chunk of my youth, because you know, I'm, I'm still young, in um, the U.S. has really, really impacted me and has had that impact on who I am today. Because I've grown up in Jamaica and I remember my lifestyle, I remember how like you know manners go a long way and I remember the dynamics between like children and elder and you know just the culture. It has really, 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 really made me who I am. But also being that I got to go to America to experience different cultures, meet different people, see different ways of life, like experience a whole bunch of stuff that I never saw before. Like, I have a deeper understanding for someone from a different country, and I'm far less quick to judge someone because they're different, because I grew up with those different people, and I saw, like, just because they're doing something that I'm not used to doesn't mean that it's wrong, doesn't mean that it's weird, it's just different from what I'm used to. So I feel like that event, like me moving to the U.S., has really had the biggest impact on my life. Do you think the future will be better than the present? I don't think so. Um, we don't know what the future holds. Like uh, the apocalypse could come tomorrow. Like a new virus can break out and kill like the whole like 95% of the population. I don't know what the future holds. I can hope that it's better than the present because there's a lot of stuff that we have to work on. But I can't say definitively that yes, the future will be better than now. Because who knows? It might be worse. The next question is, do you think human morality is learned or innate? So personally, I think it is learned. I feel like we learn right from wrong. Um, whether someone wants to do the wrong or do the right, we are taught it. Um, so yeah, I definitely think human morality is learned. Let me know what you guys think. If you have any opinion on any of these questions that I just touched on, drop some comment down below. If you agree, disagree, please leave a like. Um, hit the subscribe button if you're new here and if you're enjoying it so far. And yeah, let's keep going. What is the most crucial thing for a healthy relationship? So for that, I think trust and 
I had it in a guys, trust and communication. Trust and communication is key to me. It's so, 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 so key. Um, if you don't know, look up trust. If you don't know, look up communication. But those two things are key, crucial for a healthy relationship. What lies do you most often tell yourself? I'm going to do it tomorrow. I'm going to do it tomorrow. I'm not going to do it tomorrow, girl. Girl, you are not going to do it tomorrow. I'm going to wake up and do it. You're not going to wake up and do nothing. Like... I tell myself that lie all the time and I'm trying to break out of that trend but when I tell myself I'm gonna do it tomorrow, I'm not doing it tomorrow so I need to work on that. Do you think the present is better than 50 years ago? I would say 50-50. I'd say some things that we have grown out of is definitely better. Obviously like a lot of people did not have rights to vote. like. A lot of people were getting educated and still to this day a lot of people aren't like don't have the rights to education the right to vote and that's across the world not just in like the US Canada not the place that you're familiar with There's a lot of country that's going through things that people are so one-sided that they're like oh this is not happening in my country you know but yeah so 50 years ago I think there's a lot of things that were great but there's a lot of things that were terrible, like the way people are being treated, even to this day. So I can't really say, yes, it's so much better 50 years ago. No, it's not better than 50 years ago. Um, look at even smoking. Like people were smoking cigarettes left, right and center. And these companies were telling people, oh yeah, the doctors say you can't get cancer. We've grown past that now. So simple stuff like that, well not so simple, but things like that have really, really changed for the better. But to this day, we still have fight some of the same wars them that we were fighting 50 years ago. So no, it hasn't been better as well. It's just how you look at it. Do you look at the cup half full or do you look at the cup half empty? So it's one of those type of questions. What keeps you up at night? Hunger belly. Hunger belly keeps me up because I've had some amazing dinners. I've had some amazing meals. And I'm telling you, when a girl is full and when a girl eats and everything nice, I will sleep. I will sleep. But if I'm hungry, I'm going to stay up. I'm going to stay up and I'm going to think about everything. It's really the hunger belly that keeps me up, you know. It's not the thought. It's the hunger belly. <laughs> um, what's the most extreme example of poverty you have seen? So the most extreme example that I saw is a lady and I think I was in like the Kingston area and I believe I was, I don't know, I think I was buying here or something, something of the sort and I saw a lady and she was just so dirty, I felt so bad and I spoke about it in one of my vlogs but she was just, she was dirty, it was so 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 sad because I'm like if there's anything I could have done to help this lady I would but I just, I did not have it at the time. Um, and then we don't know, you know, we just don't know. But what crossed my mind as well is that she could have been on her menstrual, and I just imagine like not having um, access to running water to bathe, or maybe something that going on in her head where she cannot bathe. You know, like sometimes you go through your depression, and you like take my shower, rate it. Like I was thinking that, but that was that was the deepest. Uh, most extreme example of poverty that I saw with my own two eyes in person um, The next question is what do a lot of parents do that screw up their kid? So I think there's two answers to this. I feel like neglect a lot of parents that neglect their kids screw their kids up neglecting any type of form like You're not giving your kids the love that they deserve. You're not giving your kids the the treatment like parent to child like that child is not your friend stop treating your kids like your friend because that screws your kids up but also stop treating your kids like they're your enemies like who told you to go and have kids why you treat this picnic like are your enemy like this picnic come like sent from hell for come destroy your life like some of the parents really wicked to the kids like you know shame on the kids in front of family in front of other friends when you know, shame on the kids, even in, in private, I thought, well, you're fatty, you're like, you love eat, I look at your mom, yeah. them do some things that make you think like, yo, like, you are screwing your child up, and like I said, and then parents to a baby, them kids, like, oh, no, 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 so not really big baby, like, 
I'm saying like, you don't have to beat your kid, you don't have to don't like talk bad to your child, but teach your child that that's wrong, don't do that. Don't put your hand on other people, don't beat other people, like be stern with your child, be stern with your child because then when your child grow up and they do some things and y'all wonder where this behavior come from, it came from you not being stern. And again, you don't have to beat your child, like you don't have to cuss your pick me all like, we've seen it. I've seen it done before where where kids like people beat them kids that don't do nothing. But you have to talk to your child and let your child know what is what. Don't kiki ki and laugh with them and something from this is some parents though like a lot of calm colored people what them do is that them kids will do something bad and them will laugh and a kiki ki, ki. you yeah, teach your kid that that's right you can't laugh and a kiki ki, ki if your kid got kicked somebody that's not funny that's how that's how you're screwing your child up but i try to keep certain opinions to myself because girl i don't want to hear it from the parents but but look at it and uh, I see and I know a lot of other people see as well anyways I'm losing the light a little bit so let me keep it pushing um, do you think that war is inevitable or can it be ended completely so no I don't think war is inevitable but I don't think it can be ended completely as well I feel like there's a lot of things that we can do to avoid war but war is power, war is money, and where we are now, it's human nature. Like, war is human nature. Like, money and power, those are the two main things that come out of war. Like, well, death, obviously. But, like, the return on war is money and power, and that's what they want. So I don't think they're going to find any means to avoid it. While I think they, they can, they're not going to. And that's just the truth. What is the most important thing a person can do to improve themselves? So I think you can start thinking internally like how beautiful you are and I struggle with this. Like i will be the first to tell you that sometimes I look at myself when I take a picture, I look at myself in the mirror and I say some things to myself where it's like, damn B, why are you talking to yourself like that? So when you start, talk to yourself from the inside out. Be kind to yourself and I feel like that's one of the most important things that can go a long way because when you start to be kind to yourself you start to say all right then more start eat healthy more start work out more start do this but you have to start from the inside you have to be kind to yourself tell yourself some kind words what much is a human life worth and are some lives worth more than others first and foremost no life is worth more than another life that's period like my life is not worth more than your life your life is not worth more than my life we're all on this same little level for you like if bullet lick me and my dead, bullet gonna lick me and my dead. If bullet lick you and you're dead, bullet gonna lick you and you're dead. Your life is not worth more than mine and mine is not worth more than yours. Um and I can't tell you what human life is worth. It's worth so much that I cannot put into words what it's worth. Like I can't even explain to you like there's nothing on this earth there's no amount of words on this earth that I can say that human life is worth such and such because it does not exist like life is so like there's no equivalence to how much life human life is worth life in general is worth I don't, I don't know fight your mother that's just the truth Will humans spread out among the stars or just be a brief blip in Earth's history? I feel like we are very resilient people. I feel like Star Wars and Star Trek is coming. Um, I think we will spread out among the stars. Unfortunately, I won't be there to experience it because I feel like we kind of move slow on the trajectory of like living in space, going light years into space. But I definitely think like we'll get there. God make us special. I can say that we're special. Bad. So yeah. What makes a person truly evil? Are they born that way or did their environment make them that way? No, I think um my edge is lifting up. I don't like that for me. I don't like that for me. Anyway, sorry. <laughs> um what makes a person truly evil? Are they born that way or did their environment make them that way? So I think some people are born evil 
um, there's this thing, nature versus nurture. And I would love to think that, oh yeah, the world make people evil. But no, I've seen some kids and some kids are wicked. Like some kids have committed some heinous crimes. And you know what's actually crazy as well? I've seen people on the internet talk about, oh, that person could have never committed that crime because he's just 10 years old. I was like, are you mad? Like, have you not seen some of these things that some of these kids are doing? Like, some of them think they are crazy, like them wicked. So, unfortunately, I do think um, some people are born evil. Born evil. And the next thing you know, your environment can make it evil because, like we were talking about, some parents are wicked to them kids. Like, some parents are wicked next level. So, that rub off, and some parents enable. So the same thing that we were talking about earlier, like the things that parents do that screw up them child, that leads to them doing some things were evil. So believe what you believe, drop a comment down below and let me know. Do you agree? Do you disagree? What are your thoughts on it? Do you think that humans as a species have gotten better through the generations or worse? I think it's both. I think that through the generations, humans, as a species have gone great like we've done some things to better this earth that like we could never have done because we just could never group up like some people just be wicked and never want to think more us as humans as together like look at climate control for example like we're grouping up together now like our generation the generation after us they might push on a fight to save this planet that we call home and then on the other hand some of them kids here, and it's not just the kids, like, it's some of these old people as well, like, we're just going to say, it's, it's some of these humans, they will do some things like record people being murdered instead of call for help. Nana, send out nobody for good help, you know, if somebody is in some type of situation where you cannot help them, the only thing you can do is call 911, that's all you can do. I mean, I said, not nobody will go help and get killed. I, mean, I would never tell you to go and put yourself in harm's way. But you have your phone. You can call for help. You can let it be known. Like, you can get authorities. You can get the fire department. You can get the police. Like, you can get someone to help. And a lot of people would rather record and have views, have numbers, than help. So, that's disgusting. That's sick. Um is it new to this generation i definitely don't think so though uh, i think what a lot of people are forgetting and um i think there's this case several cases actually where i think it's the bystander effect i'm not sure i'm gonna have to look it up but some people would just not help in general we just have phones now to see that people would rather record but some people weren't helping either so it's a very tough question to answer, but I definitely think as a as human species we have gotten better, but we've also gotten worse in certain aspects, you know? Um, let me know what you think. Drop a comment down below and share into that topic, you know. Keen, let, let us know what you think. What are some examples of small changes that can be made that really improve the lives of a country's citizens? I feel like better roads, better infrastructure overall, better infrastructure overall, more hospitals, community centers, resources, like even let's say more libraries, more jobs, like those things can really help improve a, um, a citizen's lives, like simple things, even heading back to road, fix up your bad road then, like people are doing some things, like some fast and the furious things on these roads because them don't want to damage them vehicle with them just pay for like you, you have to like be real with some people some people are overtake because some patua like you can jump into the patua and then you are now in harm's way of some gunman who are lurking at the bushes because the car broke down and you won like there are certain things that could be avoided lighting like infrastructure i really feel like infrastructure is one of the biggest things that governments can really do to help a citizen and jobs, resources. People wouldn't have been leaving whichever city, whichever state, whichever country them in to go find a job if you're providing the jobs. Like if you can, you know, give grants to small businesses to hire that extra two people, it can go a long way. But I said what I said. Agree, disagree. I said what I said. 
Next thing, why have apocalyptic games, movies, shows, and books become so popular in the past few years? What does it say about our culture or society? Um, I think it says that our culture and our society is shed up, that we would rather disappear into um, a virtual reality, another game, another life, than deal with what we have going on and i feel like people are looking to prepare themselves via like playing these apocalyptic games and me play them and i'm like i love a zombie game like i'm prepared i'm getting i'm getting prepared but it shows that it's sad because people would rather be in that game than be in real life it's sad it's our society our culture everything is just going down the it's sad it's sad it's very very sad um and that people are looking to the worst in society because it says shows books movies games have become popular that is to show that people are looking and this is what they're taking in that you know this world is going going to the dog let me interpret that as i can into these type of scenarios and that's how we get the movies that's how we get the books because that's what people are seeing yes it's on the extreme end like zombies and all these things but it's what's going on like we are literally in the world of walking dead just because we don't have the zombies roaming about don't mean it's not true i mean yeah is there any way for governments to avoid power corrupting its politicians if so how if not what part of human nature makes corruption unavoidable i don't think there's any way for them to avoid it because human nature is just geared towards corruption like somebody will always want something for themselves for them family for their mistress for you know just because they want to cause trouble cause havoc um but yeah sometimes people are selfish and i feel like that's the part of human nature that causes corruption in government they don't think of it as a whole as that this is what my countrymen needs like this is what my country needs if i can create a better path for the next generation then i'm going to do it through my power in the government they think about what they can do to benefit them what they can do to benefit their friends and family and unfortunately i don't think it's unavoidable i feel like we should make things a lot more strict when it comes to the punishment like you should be getting serious jail time you should be getting serious fines and not one or the other both but they're not talking about that so it's gonna keep happening because somebody's gonna see tom dick and harry get away with it they're gonna do it too like why why should I not do it? Nobody's gonna stop me. And if they do stop me, I'm not going to jail for no long time. I'm not paying no wally for money. Like, I'm not getting both. It's getting one or the other. And jail time is not gonna scare me. So, unfortunately, they're gonna keep doing it. It's unavoidable and it's sad. It's disgusting, is what it is. If science makes it possible to predict which people will be more likely to commit crimes, should the highest risk individuals be jailed? Or killed before they can commit those crimes um, I don't want that because unfortunately me don't know if this theory is right and I don't know like I can't say me gonna kill you before you commit a crime how do I know you're gonna commit the crime like, how do I know you're actually gonna commit the crime I can punish you after you commit the crime but I cannot punish you before you commit a crime like what does that say about us? Like, you ain't kill somebody because them that will kill somebody? You're now killing that person to avoid them from killing someone else. And you don't even know that they're going to kill that someone. This is not 100%. Not every science is 100%. Like, what you can do, which might be a problem in and of itself, is that you can keep an eye on those people. Yes, you can say these are high-risk individuals. That maybe we can keep an eye on don't interfere because sometimes interference causes those things you can keep an eye on them and say all right let's just in the background you know keep an eye out but you can't just say i would kill or jail somebody before they even commit the crime i cannot agree with that um yeah i'm gonna do one more because that was 20 questions and it's getting kind of dark let me know what you think about any of these topics by dropping a comment down below and if you did enjoy it please give it a like check out some of my other videos and yeah but this is the final question why are there so many people who are lonely why is it so hard for people to make real connections when almost everyone wants to make real connections 
I think a lot of people are lonely because we're not sharing our true selves because we're afraid of getting hurt. That's one. And when we don't share our true selves, that other person cannot fully understand who you are. So then you feel like they don't know you. So then in turn, you feel lonely. I've been there, been there, done that. Um, so unfortunately, like, a lot of our true selves are still hidden so like i said someone can't really get to know you can't really get to relate with you so at the end of the day you feel lonely why is it so hard for people to make real connections when almost everyone wants to make real connection is because sometimes people want to be with the popular people sometimes people want to use certain people for certain things so then they might try and make a real connection but it will never work out because you're not going it going into it authentically so unfortunately we're all just in this cycle of trying to create a connection trying to create a connection but we're all chasing different things so we're all going like this like the connection will never meet because we're not being real with each other and i feel like that's just that's just the truth i mean what more can be said that's just the truth let me know what you think like i said if you enjoyed this video please give it a like drop a comment down below on any of the topics that i touched on if you want to see more of this let me know like up the video so youtube can push this i feel like this is really really interesting and i would love to do like i'll try to even do one video a month or i'll push it and try to do one video a week touching on these deep topics that we don't really touch on and yeah so it's getting really dark i really appreciate you guys for watching the video for as long as you did hit the subscribe button and i'll see you guys in the next one